In recent months, speculation and conspiracy theories about President Joe Biden's health have reached a fever pitch. The rumors, primarily centered around the possibility that Biden may be suffering from Parkinson's disease, exploded after a startling revelation about the number of doctor calls to the White House. This surge in medical consultations has fueled further suspicion and scrutiny from political opponents, the media, and the public culminating in a widespread conspiracy theory. Why are people asking whether Joe Biden's got Parkinson's? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. There have been serious questions about President Biden's health, especially after recent appearances where he appeared to be struggling. Leading Democrats, donors and celebrities have been ramping up calls for him to step aside and allow someone else to take over to try and beat Trump in November. But now, leaked docs appear to show a doctor specialising in Parkinson's, that's a condition that affects the brain and causes shaking and slow movements, visited the White House eight times between last summer and spring 2024. Four. But Biden's personal doctor has now come out and said the president hasn't seen a neurologist outside of his annual checkup. His press secretary clashed with journalists over the claim. Please, a little respect here, please. Speculation over Biden's health and his future as president continues. The origins of the Biden Parkinson's conspiracy theory can be traced back to various public appearances where Biden exhibited behavior that some deemed unusual. Instances of stumbling over words, appearing forgetful, and occasionally moving with stiffness led to speculation about his physical and mental health. These instances were often magnified by media coverage and social media discussions, creating a fertile ground for conspiracy theories. The speculation took a more focused turn towards Parkinson's disease, a progressive nervous system disorder that affects movement. After medical experts and amateur analysts alike pointed to specific symptoms they believed matched those of Parkinson's. The narrative was bolstered by selectively edited videos and images that purported to show signs of the disease. He says he's fine physically and cognitively, but is he really? A deep dive into White House visitor logs prompts questions about concerns the White House may have had about Joe Biden's mental acuity. The logs reveal that a neurologist from Walter Reed Medical Center who specializes in Parkinson's disease visited the White House 10 times over the last two years. Amber Cagliano reports. Could President Biden be suffering from the early stages of Parkinson's disease? He was asked that question during a phone-in to MSNBC's Morning Joe, but he did not answer directly. Have you been tested for any age-related illnesses, pre-Parkinson's or anything like that that might explain sort of having a night like that where you couldn't finish sentences? <laughs> I've been testing everywhere I go, okay. going out and making the case. The night of that debate, I went out. I was out till 2 o'clock in the morning that very night. That very night, it drives me nuts, people talking about this. Speculation about the president and Parkinson's is intensifying, following the revelation that a top Parkinson's specialist, Dr. Kevin Kennard, has made 10 house calls to the White House since 2022. Wait, no, 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 no. No, wait a minute. Calm. Ed, please. A little respect here. There was uproar at the White House press briefing as Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre confirmed that a Parkinson's specialist had made three house calls to visit the president. I am telling you that he has seen them three times. That is what I'm sharing with you, right? So every time he has a physical, he has had to see a neurologist. Dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, the president's recent if slurring speech, low voice, Medicare. vacant Thank expression, you, uh, slow gait, and occasional falls <laughs> are among the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta, a brain surgeon, is joining the chorus of calls for President Biden to undergo testing for the disease. The testing shouldn't be thought of as something that would embarrass or, or malign but rather maybe provide some answers to what is driving some of the signs and symptoms we've seen with President Biden. One clue during that train wreck debate, the president was seen gripping a pen, and in that interview with ABC's George Stephanopoulos, he was also holding a pen. Could holding a pen be a way to calm tremors? If you have tremors, 
Yes, um, if you have a resting tremor. A February 2024 medical report stated there was no findings of Parkinson's or other cognitive issues. The theory gained significant traction following the release of records indicating a substantial number of doctor calls to the White House. According to these records, the frequency and volume of medical consultations were higher than what is typically expected for a sitting president. While the exact nature of these calls was not disclosed, the sheer number was enough to ignite a firestorm of speculation. Critics and conspiracy theorists pounced on this information, suggesting that the high number of calls was evidence that Biden's health was deteriorating rapidly and that the administration was, was trying to keep it under wraps. The notion that these calls were related to Parkinson's disease became a focal point, with many claiming it explained Biden's occasional slips and stumbles in public. So this news just in, uh, new concerns today actually about President Biden's health. We just learned that a Parkinson's expert has been visiting the White House in the past eight months, eight times in the past eight months. That's according to White House visitor logs. We don't know why those visits actually happened, but it is coming as the president is facing growing calls to throw in the towel on his reelection bid with concerns over his health and cognitive ability. Biden says that he's not going anywhere, though, and that his campaign uh, for a second term will continue in full force. Matter of fact, he put out this letter to Democrats just this morning saying, I am firmly committed to staying in this race, to running this race to the end, and to beating Donald Trump. Biden is under tremendous pressure right now since his disastrous debate performance just two weeks ago, a performance the president just chalked up to being a bad night. Biden telling Morning Joe, though, that he has defied the conventional wisdom before, and he'll do it again. Take a listen. They're big names, but I'm not, I don't care what those big names think. They're wrong in 2020. They're wrong in 2022 about the red wave. They're wrong in 2024. And go with, come out with me, watch, watch people react. You make a judgment. So the latest 538 national polling average still showing Biden trailing former President Donald Trump by a smidge. Joining me now, senior White House correspondent Selena Wang, also senior reporter Catherine Falder. So Selena, let's start with you. What do we know about this Parkinson's expert visiting the White House eight times in eight months? Yeah, Kira, still a lot of questions about this. We know that there were eight visits between the span of last July and this March. This is according to public logs that are available online about White House visitors. But as you say, Kira, we do not know exactly why he was visiting the White House. The White House will only say, quote, a wide variety of specialists from the Walter Reed system visit the White House complex to treat thousands of military personnel who work on the grounds. So essentially, this doctor could have been here for a variety of reasons. We do not know if he was here to advise on the president's personal care. But we do know, according to a summary report released in February by the White House, that the president was seen by a neurologist and had shown no signs of Parkinson's. But of course, there is so much scrutiny on this, given all the questions about the president's mental fitness. President Biden, for his part, has said that he doesn't need to take a cognitive test, that his doctors have told him as well that he does not need to take one. The president defiant, saying that he takes a cognitive test every day doing this job. But of course, all of that not putting to bed all of the doubts about the president's mental fitness and acuity after that disastrous presidential debate. The media played a pivotal role in amplifying the conspiracy theory. News outlets, both mainstream and alternative, reported extensively on the doctor calls, often with sensational headlines that suggested a cover-up. Talk shows, political commentators, and social media influencers added their voices to the mix, each interpreting the information through their own lenses, often without medical expertise. The public reaction was divided. Supporters of Biden dismissed the theories as baseless and politically motivated, arguing that the president's health was being unfairly scrutinized and that age-related issues were being blown out of proportion. On the other hand, critics and conspiracy theorists saw the information as validation of their concerns further entrenching their belief in a cover-up. All right, more than 10 million people in the world are living with Parkinson's disease. Here in the U.S., nearly 90,000 people are diagnosed every year, which is why a new bill, President Bill 
uh, President Biden just signed into law is so important. Fox 13's Shira Masuzawa breaks it down. For me, th this bill is about hope. Hope. A four-letter word that carries a lot of weight. And for Northwest Parkinson's Foundation's Executive Director, Virgil Sweeney, President Biden signing the national plan to end Parkinson's Act into law gives a newfound hope to the nearly one million people in the U.S. living with Parkinson's right now. Parkinson's disease is the fastest growing neurological disorder in the world right now. Earlier this week, the president signed that act, making it the first ever federal legislation dedicated to ending Parkinson's disease. The legislation will increase federal research funding, develop more effective pathways for treatments and cures, and improve early diagnosis. It will also put together a task force to help people with Parkinson's but also the caregivers and families. Sometimes those are the people that get forgotten um, and they bear a lot of the burden. Sweeney says this takes effect next year, but it's already a huge step forward because this means resources will come sooner and hopefully a difference will be made in the near future, not the distant future. A lot of people with Parkinson's live in their own world um, and, and we want to let them know it's okay to have Parkinson's and there's a whole... Uh, community available to them uh, to help them through their journey. In response to the growing speculation, the Biden administration attempted to address the concerns by providing more transparency about the president's health. Official statements emphasize that the president undergoes regular health checkups and that there was no cause for alarm. However, these reassurances did little to quell the conspiracy theories. White House press secretary statements were often met with skepticism. Critics argued that the administration was not being fully transparent and that the true nature of the medical consultations was being concealed. The lack of specific details about the doctor calls only fueled further speculation. No, though, last Tuesday. Yeah. Was, uh, uh, did you know about that verbal check-in? Or no. did we just not ask him that no. precise enough so, question? So the line of questions that I was getting uh, that day was, in the way that I was hearing the question was about the medical exam. I answered MJ's question when she asked me medical exam, uh, and I answered and say, I said no, physical, and then somebody else asked me, was there a check-in? I did not mean to steer anybody wrong. I was still thinking about the medical exam. I was still thinking about the physical. That's how I answered the question. And then when it became, uh, uh, when the president actually spoke to it, we actually, I went back, asked the asked the uh, asked the uh, the medical doctor and he said they had a verbal check-in that's what he said but in answering the question i was talking about the medical exam i was talking about the physical and issue uh, quick ones uh, there's a lot of reporting the last 24 sure. hours about a, a parkinson's expert who's come to visit the white house uh, uh, almost a dozen times over the last year or so including at least one meeting with the president's uh, physician um, could you state like very clearly yes or no was that uh, expert here to participate in anything surrounding the care of the President of the United States. So let me just say a couple of things. We have had uh, a comprehensive, uh, and, and I just want to take another step back, comprehensive uh, physical examination. The President has had that. We've given a comprehensive report. We've shared that the past three years. Every year that he has, uh, every year that he has had this, uh, this exam, he sees a neurologist. Uh, and uh, just to give you a quote from that, uh, from the report most recently in February, an extremely detailed neurological exam was again reassuring in that there were no findings which would be consistent with any uh, cerebella, a cerebellar or other central neurological disorder such as a stroke, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or ascending lateral sclerosis, and quote. Uh, so that came directly from in February uh, in that comprehensive uh, report that was provided by the president's doctor uh, to me that I shared with all of you. So anyone who is watching can certainly uh, go to That's our website. The question, though, which was this, was this but, expert's visit, to, or his multiple visits to the White House so, pertaining at all to the president? Well, care. here's the thing. I have I have said he's he has had three, he has th had three uh, three physicals. In those three physicals, that's when he has seen a specialist, a, neurolo a neurological specialist. specialist. I have to be super mindful here, and this is why, and I'll, and I'll explain this to you in a second. There are thousands of military personnel who come onto this White House. Uh, many of them get the care from the White House Medical Unit, uh, and so need to be super careful. There are, uh, you know, the medical unit, uh, 
hosts a wide range of specialists from dermatologists to neurologists and so I cannot speak to every person because there are act there's actually a security reasons to protect their privacy we respect and protecting uh, people's privacy so do not want to share uh, I'm not going to share people's names from here uh, but the president I can tell you has seen a neurologist three times as it's connected to the uh, to a physical that he gets every year that we provide Medical experts were called upon to provide their opinions on the matter, with varying perspectives. Some experts noted that it is not uncommon for older individuals, especially those in high-stress positions like the presidency, to have frequent medical consultations. They argued that the number of doctor calls did not necessarily indicate a serious health issue like Parkinson's disease. Others, however, suggested that the symptoms observed in Biden's public appearances were concerning and warranted further investigation. They pointed out that while frequent doctor calls could be routine, the specific context of Biden's age and observed behavior made it a legitimate area of concern. These differing opinions added to the complexity of the narrative and provided ammunition for both sides of the debate. With us now, Dr. Drew Pinsky, Chief Medical Board member, known for his self-titled television show, Dr. Drew. All right, lots to unpack here. The White House today uh, admitted that the president talked to a neurologist uh, three times during his medical exams. Won't say why uh, one of the top Parkinson's do docs in the country uh, has come to the White House at least eight times. Won't say, uh, in fact, won't even uh, acknowledge publicly this person's name who was a visitor um, at the White House. If the White House isn't going to start talking about the president's medical conditions honestly, is it fair now for doctors to start speculating about it? You know, uh, it's never fair to speculate about the diagnosis, but we are certainly at our liberty to describe what we see. Let me just say that when doctors are trained in medical school, we are shown images, pictures, say, of rashes, so we learn what rashes are when we see them out in the clinic. And when it comes to neurological diseases, we watch videos, videos of people with things like movement disorders, and a video that would be exemplary of movement disorder would be watching Joe Biden walk, watching his arm swing, watching his facial lack of facial expression. These are a constellation of symptoms that are called Parkinsonian. Now, whether he has Parkinson's disease or not, that's what's not fair. No one should be speculating on what his diagnosis is. We don't know. A lot of things cause Parkinsonian features. But it is completely reasonable to say we are seeing motoric slowing, festinating gait, masked faces, slow speech. Let me just tell you what speech the Parkinson's Foundation says a Parkinsonian speech is. Stuttering, mumbling, slurring words, using monotone, speaking softly, having trouble projecting voice. This is all a Parkinson. So he's got multiple. The only thing he doesn't have is tremor that we can see at least. So this is simply a fact. I'm just describing okay. what we are seeing, which are Parkinsonian features. Now, we can speculate. The one thing that happens to a doctor when he or she sees a list of this observable findings, we start thinking, well, what are the kinds of things that could cause those? I could give you that list. I can't tell you which one applies to him. None of them are particularly reassuring. Thanks. The conspiracy theory surrounding Biden's health had significant implications for the political landscape. For Biden's opponents it became a key talking point used to question his fitness for office and to cast doubt on his ability to lead effectively. Political ads and campaign speeches frequently referenced the issue, portraying Biden as unfit and potentially incapacitated. For Biden and his supporters, the conspiracy theory was seen as a politically motivated attack aimed at undermining his presidency. They argued that the focus on his health was a distraction from more important issues and that it was being used to sow doubt and division. The administration's efforts to address the issue were framed as an attempt to maintain stability and continuity in leadership. Uh, we're getting uh, more news on this story uh, in a letter from Corrine Jean-Pierre uh, and also from Kevin O'Connor, who's President Biden's doctor, physician. Uh, I want to put this up here from Matt Visor at the Washington Post with the letter uh, saying Dr. Kennard was the neurological specialist that examined President Biden for each of his annual physicals. His findings have been made public each time. President Biden has not seen a neurologist 
outside of his annual physical. Uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre and Dr. O'Connor say uh, that I wanted to share with you background on why Dr. Kevin Kennard visited the White House, they say, to protect patient privacy for the thousands of patients of the White House Medical Unit and the physicians who treat them. Normally, we do not disclose the names of the specialists we work with. However, in the interests of accuracy, I've obtained permission from the president and Dr. Kennard to confirm the details I am sharing. Uh, we want to bring into the conversation uh, my friend at the New York Post, John Levine, who broke parts of this story today as well about these visitor logs from some of these medical specialists, uh, and he joins me. Um, John, thanks for being with us here. Um, so they're making an exception uh, at the president's urging, uh, going against this policy uh, Corrine had said today out of security reasons they just don't disclose it they're disclosing it now why well I mean I think they're disclosing it because there's an enormous amount of public and media pressure demanding it none of this is coming out of the goodness of their hearts you know when I first reported this and you can see it in the on the record statement that the White House gave me they they tried to say well canard shows up and He's, you know, he, he could be treating anyone in the White House. He, you know, maybe an intern had a headache. So we bring in the top neurologist at Walter Reed. It never really made sense. And I think uh, Ed O'Keefe and his colleagues in the press corps today were right to press Kareem Jean-Pierre. I remember I was texting with some people today and I said, this is, this reminds me of the Trump years, except this, you know, in the Trump years, it was obviously happening every single day. Uh, you know, the Biden people are experiencing what it was like to be Trump for a few days now because the press is very eager for President Biden to leave the race, and their coverage clearly reflects that. But this is an example of one area where they were not transparent, and in an earlier era of this presidency, it might have gone unchallenged. But now the press is out for blood, and they did force this to come out. So now we do know that Kennard um, was the one that examined President Biden. It, the, the language is a little iffy. I reported on the January 2024 meeting in the White House Residence Clinic between Kevin O'Connor, President Biden's physician, uh, Kevin Kennard, the Parkinson specialist, and a third person, uh, Dr. John E. Atwood, who is a cardiologist from Walter Reed. But the logs indicate there was a fourth person in that meeting. And I, I think it's abundantly clear that that was President Biden, but they, they didn't actually say he was in that meeting. So I, I really wish Kareen would have elaborated on that more. There aren't security issues at stake in saying it was President Biden. I understand if it was someone else with an issue, there would be. But you can say clearly this was Biden, this was not Biden, without compromise. The controversy also sparked broader discussions about public health and ageism. Some commentators pointed out that the intense scrutiny of Biden's health was indicative of a broader societal tendency to stigmatize aging and to equate age with incapacity. They argued that the focus on Biden's health was reflective of ageist attitudes and that it perpetuated harmful stereotypes about older individuals. Others, however, contended that the health of a sitting president is a matter of public concern and that it is reasonable to expect transparency about any potential health issues. They argued that the stakes are high when it comes to the leadership of the country and that the public has a right to be informed about the president's ability to perform his duties. Well, we told you earlier this week that former Vice President Joe Biden was taking time off to mull or run for president. Now, sources say a big part of his dilemma is whether he is too old. Reports say Biden is discussing a potential presidential run in 2020 with his friends and family. Biden is 76 and aware that his age may be the biggest hurdle to securing a bid for the Democratic nomination. He would be the oldest person ever elected president. His advisors have reportedly been talking about options to alleviate those concerns, including pairing him with a younger running mate. We'll keep you posted on this one. Stay tuned. We're coming right back. The controversy over Biden's health has prompted discussions about the future of presidential health transparency. Some have called for more stringent requirements for disclosure of medical information for sitting presidents arguing that greater transparency is necessary to maintain public trust. Proposals have been made for regular, detailed health updates to be made publicly available, potentially overseen by an independent medical body. Others have cautioned against such measures, 
warning that they could infringe on the privacy of individuals and could be used for political purposes. They argue that while transparency is important, there must be a balance that respects the privacy and dignity of the president. The debate over how to handle presidential health transparency is likely to continue, informed by the lessons learned from the Biden health controversy. All right, let's jump into politics now. President Biden facing growing calls from inside the party and out to drop out of the race. I want to share a tweet with our viewers that you wrote. On Saturday, it says this, quote, the White House and the media are complicit in the biggest cover up since Watergate. Congressman, what do you mean by that? Can you elaborate? Well, just, you know, just as you were saying, these scripted questions, um, President Biden has not been in interviews like any other president in the past. He's not been able to answer questions. And, you know, it, it went out a good, it was about two, three months ago, the, the big flourish of uh, when Speaker Pelosi and Hakeem Jeffries, all, all they talk about his sharpness and, and his, his acuity. And then you see in front of the American people when all the curtains come down, that's not the case. They have been covering up a man in cognitive decline. Um, and I think it's a travesty for this country. And Hannah, even, even more so in this race right now, we're not even talking about the issues. We're talking about the cognitive condition of one of the candidates. So we're way off base here. And, you know, as I've said many times, sometimes the uh, Democrats love to say, don't believe what you see, believe what we tell you. With, and uh, this is what's happened here. With that said, I do want to bring up his rally in Wisconsin. He was energetic. He was answering questions. He was speaking off the cuff. You're nodding your head. You're smiling. Why? I, I, that's not him. That is not the normal him. Maybe that's him in a, in, a, in certain bursts of speed. Great. Um, but that's not the normal him. And then for the White House to say that he was uh, or then president to say, well, I didn't get enough rest. It was 11 days after his trip. So, you know, there's a Joe Biden we see that's energetic. And then there's the Joe Biden we see that is just not with it. I want to remind our viewers, you're a physician. Of course, you're not treating the president. Many Republicans yeah. have called Biden out for his so-called cognitive decline. If he agrees to a cognitive test, would you support the former president, former President Trump, taking one as sure. well? Absolutely. I actually personally believe, you know, I'm a surgeon. After age 70, we have to have cognitive and mechanical tests and everything to make sure we're OK. Look, this is something that the nation deserves. It does, you know, remember, calls don't always come in at three o'clock in the afternoon. They come in at 2 a.m. Person has to be able to get up, wake up, be smart on the ball. And right now we're just not seeing that ability uh, from President Biden. And it also speaks to the fact that he continues to decline having a cognitive test. And there's so many questions. If he had just taken one and, and done well with it, boy, that would answer so many questions. Kamala Harris is, as you know, sir, widely seen as a likely choice to step in if the president does end his campaign. How would Harris at the top of the ticket impact the GOP strategy of winning back the White House and, of course, winning Congress come November? Well, I think uh, Vice President Harris in her in her role as vice president has even a lower approval rating uh, than the president does. And sadly enough, I, pe I think people do not see her as a serious candidate. Yeah. I think the Democrats are in quite a quandary here because they made her vice president. But for her to be president of the United States, well, what is it? I think 28 executive members of her staff have all left. I don't think she's a very viable candidate. And I think the American people don't think she is either. The Biden Parkinson's conspiracy theory, fueled by the revelation of the White House's high number of doctor calls, represents a complex interplay of media sensationalism, political maneuvering, public concern, and digital misinformation. The controversy has had significant implications for the political landscape, public health discussions, and the broader conversation about transparency and privacy for public figures. As the debate continues, it highlights the importance of critical thinking, media literacy, and a balanced approach to public health transparency. The challenges of managing misinformation and the role of digital media in the spread of conspiracy theories are underscored, emphasizing the need for strategies to promote accurate information and informed public discourse. In the end, the controversy serves as a reminder of the complexities of modern political life and the need for thoughtful, measured responses to issues of public concern. The lessons learned from this episode will likely inform future discussions about presidential health, media responsibility, and the intersection of politics and public perception.